Hi everybody, I'm Erica with Fibers and Floss. I thought I would start a floss tube and uh, today is day number one and I see how it goes. Um, I did film with my girlfriend in October and I had a lot of feedback suggesting that I make a floss tube and although the whole process is a little bit intimidating in terms of keeping up with content and having enough to share on a frequent enough basis, um, I thought I'll give it a go and see and if it falls flat it does and if I enjoy it and it's something that I want to continue then I will. Um, I thought I'd start with introducing myself a little bit. Uh, some of you may have met me last month or I guess two months ago now. Um, my girlfriend Samantha is the Hugo Stitcher and we did a floss tube in August um, and so it was a, definitely a fun experience for sure. Um, it's made me think that maybe it is something that I can do and I do wish we lived in the same city so we could do it together. But um, this is me trying it on my own. In case you didn't catch that, I thought I would introduce myself a little bit again. Um, I live in Vancouver, actually Abbotsford, which is the outskirts of Vancouver in British Columbia, Canada. Um, I've lived in BC for my whole life. Um, I married a wonderful husband and three children and a dog. Um, our kids are a little bit older now, so I'm able to find some more time for myself and um, get back into some of the crafting that I used to enjoy when I was younger. One of the uh, goals for 2023 for me was actually to invest more time in uh, making. I'm definitely a maker and it brings me a lot of joy and happiness and I just felt it was important that I do something for myself. Um, I think with uh, COVID and the lockdown, we kind of lost touch with, you know, if you're a parent, with who you were when we spent a lot of time with our kids. And as a mom, you know, you're constantly giving, 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 and um, we need to make sure our bucket's a little bit full too. So this is something that I thought I would focus on this year, and I have, and it feels great. So um, I'd like to share some of it with you. I do work. Um, I work on, at a casual basis, but nearly full-time hours as an emergency room nurse. Um, it is a very stressful job. It's a love-hate job. Absolutely uh, love it when you're in the thick of it, but it is very stressful and traumatic. And um, stitching is a great way to kind of relieve some of that and reset myself a little bit for the week so I can be a focused mom at home. Um, we... We're a very crafty house. We do a lot of hobbies here, um, really try and advocate for the kids to be off the screen and being outside and interacting and connecting rather than spending that time on a, a device of some sort. Um, for myself, I have an array of hobbies, um, a lot actually. So I, of course, I cross stitch and needlepoint, uh, which is kind of more seasonal for me than needlepoint. But I knit as well. Um, I've crocheted in the past. Um, in the last two years, I got into spinning yarn. Not like I needed to, but uh, it, you know, it's beautiful. Fibers are so beautiful, right? Um, in addition to that, uh, we also do tons of stuff around the house, whether that is um, baking or making bread or just decorating, keeping up with the things that the kids do. Do. Um, I also I quilt, I sew, I've been making project bags. Um, we also enjoy weaving. I wish there was a, a fabulous basket maker close by, but there isn't. Um, I'd love to take some more courses in basketry. And um, yeah, and then just life with kids seems to kind of fill everything else up. Everything else fills up everything else does that make sense <laughs> anyways I guess I could edit that if I want um, anyways I thought I'd get into it so I do have my 2023 book of days um, this is something that Samantha got me into um, I guess about a year ago now I don't I don't keep a good record of things that I stitch and I really should because in making this floss tube I'm thinking geez I really don't uh, I really don't know much about, you know, what fabrics I used or the dates, so that took a lot of my time going over and trying to research a little bit. So here's October. I kind of decorated it with some um, spooky decorations for the month. Um, I'm not a huge Halloween person, but um, I do like Halloween stickers, so here I just kind of keep track of what I have been stitching, um, usually the hours that I put into it as well. 
and then that way I'm able to go back and look at what I have been doing. Um, I hope my nails are okay for you guys. I wanted to paint my nails, but man, there's a lot of work that goes into prepping these videos. And so you get me as I am. Um, I thought I'd start with cross stitch. So I'll talk about a few things here. I have some cross stitch, I have some knitting, I have some sewing. Um, I was thinking I might discuss some of the books that I've been reading too, but I also don't want this to be a very long video. So um, I'll just see how it goes. The first thing I wanted to start with was um, Sampler September. So for September, I picked up my Dutch Beauty um, cross stitch. This is something that I started last year and I, I did look back through Instagram. Um, I'm fibers at fibers and floss. Uh, you guys can definitely have a look and follow along if you like. Um, but there is really my only record keeping I have of a lot of the stuff I've stitched. Um, yeah, so here's Dutch Beauty. This is a, a mammoth of a pattern. I think it ends up being like just over two feet by three feet on a 40 count. Um, a lot of people call it their legacy project because it does take so many years to stitch. Um, but it is really neat and it is of Dutch heritage. Um, my mother's side of the family is Dutch as well. So I kind of felt a bit of a connection with this one. Um, I will insert a photo here so that you guys can see where I was prior to September of this month. Um, I did work on this previously two months. So October of 2022, it was a new start for me. And then um, January of 2023. And then I tucked it away and I've just picked it up again um, for September. So here's where I'm at right now. This board, you guys, is huge. So I'm just working on the first of three rows. This here, um, I'm stitching on a 40 count platinum. It's a Newcastle linen. It, you know, it's one of those ones where there is no recommended fabric. Um, it was stitched in the late 17th century. And so we, we don't have a lot of information on it. It's a very basic DMC flosses, as you can see there. Um, I am using the call for flosses. We, what we do know about this is it is a reproduction. It was stitched by a girl who was about 13 years old in the lowlands or the low countries, they call it, uh, which is in Holland. Her initials are H V Z and we think she was born in 1790. Um, and she stitched it when she was 13. She's got about 68 features in there. There's a lot of, um, every single motif that's in here, there is some um, significance to it. And so I thought maybe what I would do is just read um, what is written about each thing, because it does, it is really neat to stitch it and to see the representation of everything there. On the upper row here, there is a windmill and it says the windmill is a symbol of energy, labor, and life. And below that, there is what they assume to be a bride um, with flowers in her hand. And the flower is a symbol of the paradise and the, the female beauty. And the bridegroom is standing to the far right side of her as well. Oh, that's interesting. Far right side of the pattern, which I haven't stitched yet, the other side. Um, in the center here, we can see there is a tree with some birds, and below that are two deer. The tree is mostly standing for the tree of life, and the birds in the tree stand for fertility. They spread the seeds. The deer on both sides um, are the guards. And then there is a Dutch virgin in the garden, and she's holding a stick or a lance in her left hand, and on the stick with a hat, waving a ribbon. The Dutch virgin is a symbol of freedom. And then moving over a bit more, um, there is a small, there's a small right angle design above, which is a pin cushion with a tassel on each corner. And the cushion stands for the virtueness of women. There's a vase with flowers, and these are like the trees of life. The vase is the source of life. And in the center, there is the initials of the embroiderer, which are placed in a wreath and are crowned. There are also the angels of the, with trumpets, standing for the voice of God. So it's actually a really neat pattern. It's a little booklet and it does tell you a little bit about every single motif that you are stitching and, and what it does represent. So here I have done pages A, B, and C. My plan for um, Sampler September was to complete page B, which I had just started, and complete page C. And I think C is complete. 
Um, so I'll probably tuck this away now until January and I'll pull that out after all the holiday stitching. So that is that one. Um, the next one I wanted to share was actually a new start that I had done in August and I had meant to share it in our previous floss tube with Sam, but we, we talked about so much stuff we didn't think about it until after the fact, of course. Um, so what I am stitching here is Royal Games by Mirabilia. And this is a cross stitch pattern that, um, you know, we purchased many, many years ago and fully kitted up. And not only do I have that one, but I also have Royal Games too, um, which is actually really neat because you're getting all four suits. Um, I have seen this stitched where people are um, in this here. It's actually really neat because right along this kind of this line here is the center, like a center line of the pattern. So you can choose to stitch the queen up top and then you can also stitch the queen of hearts on the bottom as well. So I have seen people that have chose to do, um, you know, the, the queen of hearts and then the queen of spades and the queen of diamonds, etc., cetera, um, and have four different ones, uh, or you can stitch it the, the way it's shared here. And that's what I've done. So um, this is my stitching so far. I started that at our summer vacation time. We always have um, month of August, our families go to her family cabin and we share some time there and I always complete a stitch and start a stitch. So this was my start this year. Um, I worked on it for about 11 days um, in combination with some other stitches at the same time. So I think I made a lot of progress, um, but that happens when you're hanging out at a cabin with very little to do, right? So this is Royal Games 1 uh, done by Mirabilia and I am stitching it on a 32 count Optic White by Wilchelt. Um, I, I had a lot of reservation whether or not I do go with the white. It is very, very bright, um, just like a playing card would be. So I understand why they chose that for the design. Um, but I was a bit apprehensive with having the kids in my house and we live in the country and we have a dog and, you know, just the dirt and stuff, um, whether or not it would stay nice and optic white. I did look a lot on Instagram looking at some other color options and um, just the darker colors and the variants people use just didn't really seem to do it for me. So I did stick with the optic white. I'm quite happy with it. Um, I'm using all the called four colors, uh, which is just DMC floss. Um, there's some Mill Hill beading in there and Kranich as well. Um, yeah, so that's that one. You guys might notice I'm actually, you see my jars here, I'm filming in my kitchen. <laughs> we have this gorgeous house with beautiful windows everywhere, but um, windows are no good for filming. And I lack wall space, and so this is about the only corner that I have where the lighting is half decent for filming. Um, I hope to, uh, if I continue on with this, I'll, I'll make a better filming spot. But for now, I thought it's something I could just easily grab and go. Um, and use. So the other thing that I'm stitching right now is I'm keeping up with a stitch along um, by Owl Forest Embroidery and it's their Treasure Island and this is one that we did share last month as well um, on Sam's Floss Tube. So this is a stitch along by Owl Forest Embroidery and every year they do a classic um, like a fairy tale stitch along they've done um, you know, Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland and I've done those and then this is their Treasure Island it started in May of 2023 and will go until um, I think mid-December of this year. Uh, we're almost done. There's not that much left. Right now the piece we're stitching is in the center here with the island. Um, there's a bunch of trees and stuff that will go in there and I've kind of hit pause on this till the next release which is every second Friday so I think it's this Friday that will be coming out. Um, I did order this directly from Owl Forest Embroidery. It is stitched on a 32 count um, custom kitted up linen by Owl Forest Embroidery. And I am using their hand dyed variegated floss as well. Um, previously with their pieces, I make a lot of changes to the patterns. And I haven't really on this one with the exception of the, the black dot there. Um, it was quite asymmetrical. And, it just bothered me personally, so I changed that. But everything else is as it's called for. I'm having a lot of fun with this and able to actually keep up with the stitch, so that's nice. 
All right, um, let's see. Another thing I wanted to share about myself is that I've always considered myself to be a bit of a monogamous stitcher. I, I feel like I work on only one or maybe two projects at a time. Um, however, that is totally not true. In prepping for this today, I realized I have a lot more on the go than I thought. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of floss tube, and while I'm stitching, I usually have it kind of in the background, half listening, half watching, you know. And um, I get a little anxious with some people that have, you know, 40, 50, 70. Some people have 200 whips on the go, and I just, I can't, I, like, I, there's no way I could handle that. It's crazy for me. Um, but in counting mine up, I think, you know, I probably have four, maybe five um, that I work on at a time. So I went from already one to two to four to five to right now I'm sharing, um, I think, five or six today. And I have a few more on the go than that. And I have a few more kitted up as well. So um, I definitely stitch uh, a lot more things at once than I thought. Um, the next one that I started was a seasonal stitch. I do love seasonal stitching. Um, in the fall this year, I thought, well, I can start something. I'm trying to use some stuff that I already partially had kitted up. Um, I was looking at whether or not I do something more of like an autumn stitching, and I definitely will be doing that next year. Um, this year, though, I did choose to do this. So this is the Greenhouse of Oddities um, by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. Uh, I did download the pattern and uh, it actually prints out quite lovely. So I just wanted to show you where I'm at with that. So this one here, um, I started on October the 2nd and uh, I've got a fair bit done actually. I'm pretty impressed with myself here. Um, this one here is being stitched on a 28 count, which is kind of crazy for me. I don't think, um, you know, I, I would have said I've never stitched on a 28 count, but now I have. Um, I did order my fabric from Embroidery Marketplace. So we li I live in Canada and um, in British Columbia, and there really isn't much in the way of LNSs. There is um, one on the island, but it is on Vancouver Island. Um, and every time I've gone in there, I've walked out empty handed, which is crazy because I'm a shopper. Um, but what I did end up finding is this lovely lady, Jennifer, she owns um, Embroidery Marketplace uh, out of Alberta. And she's fantastic. She um, She's so quick with everything. You know, I'll place an order today and I'll get it uh, the next province over. I'll get it in about two to three, maybe four business days, uh, which is unheard of in the stitchy world we all know that you know sometimes it's three months to get that fabric you desperately want right so highly highly recommend embroidery marketplace for anything that you need um, yeah she's wonderful so I did order this fabric from her um, this is haunted it's stitched on a 28 count Lugana um, it is a picture this plus and it's beautiful fabric um, first time I've stitched on picture this plus and I just cannot believe how much tighter um, the hand dyed linen is as opposed to the other um, the other linens I'm used to working on. So um, here I've started. I've done page one, two, and three, which goes across the top, and I've just started page six. So we have uh, one, two, three, and then four, five, six, and I'm just starting six stitching down this way. And I'll stitch on this here until the end of the month, um, and then I'll tuck it away October the 31st um, and save it for next year. But um, definitely enjoying it, love the colors, can't wait to get into down here where we are stitching some of the plants. Um, the tree is definitely, it was a little bit of like confetti style stitching, which, uh, you know, you don't always enjoy until it's done. Um, and even though this is a 28 count Lugana, I did count it out because I thought, wow, this seems really tight and small and it does count out to a 34. Um, and so I'm stitching this with the called for uh, DMC fabric. And in doing so, the, the stitches are definitely popping right off of this fabric. Uh, it could almost be stitched with, I don't wanna say one over two, but um, definitely doesn't stitch up like a 28 wood. Anyway, so that is that one. 
Um, the next one that I wanted to share with you as well that I've been working on is something I haven't worked on for a very long time. Um, but I thought I should pull this out because I know my girlfriend, uh, Samantha, wants to borrow some of the extra flosses since started as well. So this one here is a owl forest embroidery and it is 100 owls. Um, I'll insert a picture for you because I actually don't have um, the physical pattern. It's all an online pattern. Um, and in here, you know, our forest embroidery is fantastic. They use these beautiful variegated flosses. I don't know if you can kind of see that there. Um, excuse, there's a thread on the front. And I have like the face of that owl there I've changed as well. Just using some other floss that I have bought. Um, Samantha was, or occasionally does work at Lizzie B's in Winnipeg and I had her go do a bunch of shopping and just get a whole bunch of random um, silks and flosses and uh, that I could you know use to change up some of the detail in those owls so uh, you can see I've started that there absolutely love it it's quite a large one too but yeah um, the next one I have as well is um, a new start that I'm, I'm, oh, actually, before I do that, I want to share um, something that I have finished and I have framed. And this is one I've done a long time ago. Um, this is a Mirabilia cross stitch. It's called the Petal Fairy. You can see that there. Hopefully the glare's not too bad for you. Um, this pattern was released a really long time ago, 2004. December 1st, 2004. And I think I stitched it um, 2005 and framed it in oh, late 06. Um, I framed it to put into my daughter's bedroom. Um, I was expecting her early 2007. So um, I always put my initials in my stitching and I didn't on this one. I must have been rushed or pregnancy brain or something, I don't know. Um, and I have since given the pattern to Samantha and she is stitching that has stitched it she has stitched it and she's doing the other petal fairy so there's two they're facing um the middle and if you were to frame the two of them side by side they actually make a bit of a heart which is beautiful and she was very fun to stitch very quick lots of block stitching in the petals of her skirt and stuff like that um i don't know what this was stitched on probably the call for 32 count uh linen um but i didn't keep any record back then and it's all just DMC flosses, uh, Mill Hill beads, and Krynek in it. I thought, I do have a bunch that are framed, and I, I thought that I'll just kind of periodically share as I'm talking um, over potential future floss tubes, um, ones that I have stitched and framed up. And I have a, many, many more that are not framed and need to be framed. Um, so... About a week or two weeks ago, maybe on Instagram, I was asking people, um, you know, what I should stitch next. November 1st, I wanted to do a new start um, and whether or not, um, you know, that was a cup, one of a couple options. Um, so the two options I put out there was um, a Teresa Wensler pattern, and I'll tell you a story about that in a second. And then the other one that went out was the Kringles. Um, pattern by Little House Needleworks. So um, this is the pattern here. It's still in the bag. I haven't even taken it out. I bought this, I think it was last year from Embroidery Marketplace. Um, again, super fast, like ridiculously fast shipping. And then I reached out to Jen um, hmm, maybe th two, three weeks ago and wanted to kit it up with the fabric and the floss. Um, and she doesn't carry access commodities and the fabric calls for Parisian gray. It does look very cream in this, but it is a gray. She doesn't carry it. Um, and so we had settled on um, a different fabric uh, that I've purchased. And you know, it's a Lugana by, Z by Zweigert and it's called Blue Moon. And this is the fabric. And it's kind of hard to tell on the screens, but you know, the color's not right. Um, it's kind of a mauve. Actually, in the light, it, you can see it's like a bluey mauve color. And um, I'll see if I can get the flosses here. Oop, I'm dropping them all over the place. But when you look at the flosses, I mean, they just don't, it just doesn't go. 
you know? It's just not right. And so I hummed and hawed over this. I actually pulled this out last night and I thought, oh, and I was texting Sam and I said, Samantha, it doesn't work. It's not, it's not right color. Um, you know, I was ready to start this right away. I had it all kitted up. And so I was in a bit of a panic at last night and then I realized, oh, she's got the time changed. And I'm texting her at 1230 at night. So hopefully her ringer was off and it was. <laughs> Um, and then I pull out my stash and I found this beautiful fabric. I don't know if you guys can see, but it has like all this sparkle. And so I thought, well, maybe this would actually go really well. And so I grabbed all the flosses and the colors actually look quite nice on there. But two things, um, is the, the cream in this, it's not going to pop. You're not going to see all the snow and stuff. Um, and it's not a full coverage piece, so you really do need to have that definition there. Um, and so this example here, you can kind of see, like it, it pops a little bit, but there's a lot that you can't see that are in those little rooms that has the cream. And so that was my first, mm, don't know that this fabric's gonna work. And the second, I don't even know when I bought this, maybe 25 years, 20, 25 years ago. And I don't know why I would have ever bought this, but it's a 24 count. You guys who stitches on a 24 count, it's crazy. Um, so then, you know, midnight thoughts, right? Of, okay, well, what if I stitch one over one on this, then it works. Then I'm stitching on like a 48 count, but then my Kringles will be really small. Do I want it to be small? So then, you know, mom, one, two, three stitch last night. And I just ordered the Access Commodities one. And I already have a shipping notification this morning saying that it's been shipped out, uh, which is great. Um, the other thing is I'm in Canada, right? So even though they usually do ship within a day or two, it still takes two to three weeks to get it. So I hope um, that it arrives maybe the first week of November and that's still my plan that I will start that. Um, I do love seasonal stitching so I'll definitely be doing that as well as a little something else I have to share with you. Um, just one second and I'll grab it. Apparently my remote has died so that's awesome. Um, you guys, thank you so much for uh, filming all the, the floss tubes. It is a tremendous amount of work. Nobody really talks about how much work goes into these things. Um, just between, you know, getting things organized and taking notes and uh, writing things down so you don't forget things that you want to mention. And I've already forgot a ton of things that I wanted to mention, so that's awesome. Um, you know, I'll be linking lots of stuff below for you guys. Any names that I've mentioned um, will all be down below as well. Um, I wanted to share two more things about cross stitch and then I'll move into some knitting. Um, so in terms of plans, I have the Kringles that's coming up. And in the meantime, um, I've also picked up the um, 2023 Christmas Ornament uh, magazine. And it's funny because in these magazines, you know, quite often you look at them and you might like one or two of the designs, you know. But every every year I make my each of my children a cross stitch ornament for their... Well, it does not be cross stitch. I make an ornament for the Christmas tree for them. And I do like um, things that are rather traditional. Um, here are some of the new patterns this year that are in here. And some of them are just beautiful. So while I was at one, two, three last night, as we all do at midnight when we should be sleeping, I have ordered um, some new 40 count uh, like remnants, small little pieces that I can stitch some of these on. But like, look at this one here, the, the Winter Wonderlands. Aren't those beautiful? I would stitch all of those. Um, and then I went on to Amazon and I've ordered these little hoops. I was watching, I think it was Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. And um, she had taken, you know, a four by four wooden hoop and wrapped around all the fabric around the edging and then popped her piece into it and it looked great. So I thought maybe that's what I'll do with some of these this year. Um, I went on to Amazon, like she had said she had done, and I found these amazing little um, embroidery hoop frames that are like a dark, um, 
like a walnut looking wood it's not walnut but it looks like walnut and so I thought oh, it would be great to stitch some of these vintage looking pieces in that um, so that will be my plan um, and maybe I'll get to share that with you guys next month as part of my seasonal stitching I'll be doing um, and then my next piece is a my next plan is something that I'm in the midst of kidding up right now um, it's actually a funny one because you know I get all the stories from my girlfriend Sam um, and you know the embroidery guild she goes to and the coveted Teresa Wensler patterns um, that people have given her and she's stitching one and I worked on one a little bit in August just to kind of get a feel for um, Teresa Wensler's patterns and they are a bit intense right I mean the colors even just picking up her floss I was like what how do you even have this organized this doesn't make any sense you know your color or your the colors of the floss they're not like in order in terms of her numbers um it, it was a little bit crazy and so I Every Thursday night for years, we have our ladies group comes over and sometimes we don't do anything and other times we stitch and other times we just, you know, might play a board game or have some drinks or chat. And so one of my girlfriends, Rana, she is from Australia and she's lived all over the world. She's just amazing. And she had brought a, um, a bunch of patterns that she had found that were tucked away from, I think when she was living in Scotland, maybe. And so we we're going through some of them and I was like, oh my gosh, you have a couple of Wenslers in here. And, you know, and she had no idea what, what's a Wensler. And she had this beautiful one. This is the Peacock Tapestry. Um, and it's gorgeous. And so it does have a lot of specialty stitching um, around the edges as well like a, almost like a Celtic frame. And then you could, you guys could imagine, like just look at, you know, look at the, I don't know if that focuses there, but the grass and in the peacock, the colors, the color list for this is just, as all Wenslers are, I mean, look at the, look at the colors that are needed. It's crazy, right? So it took me like half an hour just to organize my list of colors I need. Um, and I do have all the flosses. They are largely, they're pretty much all DMC floss. Um, and I did get those. They, it's crazy, I have all these flosses and I don't have um, what's needed for this pattern. I'll insert a picture. I, I had a better picture of the colors. They were just beautiful. And then the fabric I've ordered as well, which is, you guys, it's a 25. I've never stitched on a 25, it's crazy. Um, I thought about doing a smaller stitch count, but you know, with just the specialty um, stitches and some of this does call for like, you know, three strands uh, stitched together. I thought, well, maybe I should go with the 25 and, and we'll go from there. And so it's a 25, um, mushroom lugana from Zweigart so um, that will be coming in the mail shortly as well and so I'm thinking maybe January 1st I might start that we'll see anyways that's um that's nearly it for my cross stitch that I wanted to share I I do want to do a giveaway though um I think this book was it's got so many great uh, ornaments in it this year that I picked up an extra copy and I thought maybe I'll share it with someone. I've actually never stitched um, a pattern out of a magazine before so that will be a first for me this year and I thought maybe a first for somebody else too um, or not maybe maybe you do this every year I don't know and you just these are hard to find too these books right they're so cheap if you can find them in the store um, you know they're t US they're nine bucks in, in Canada they're eleven dollars um, but if you order it from any of the cross stitch stores you know they're almost 16 to 20 dollars depending on the store which is a lot more money so I did find these for the giveaway if you guys if you want one of these um, you there's a couple things so in the comment section you can the comment I'll be searching is seasonal um, I'll put that up here seasonal for you guys and then um, you need to like the video and subscribe and I will be drawing for this um, hmm, Let's say November the 15th but now November 15th so about three weeks from now um, I'll draw for that and then I'll send that out to you guys you can be anywhere in the world and I'll ship that to you um, yeah, so like, subscribe, and the comment is seasonal.
and I'll send that out to one of you guys. Um, the other thing I wanted to share is that I do make some project bags for cross stitch and some stitching caddies and portfolios as well. And I do have a new line. Um, I picked up all the Tilda hibernation and I'll be stitching those bags in November. And I just wanted to share the fabric with you. So, um, just one second, I'll grab it for us. Okay. So for the, um, Tilda hibernation, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I, where I live, there's this amazing fabric store. Um, it literally is about a minute and a half of a drive from my house, which is funny because we're in the middle of the country. Uh, you know, there's, there's not a grocery store, but I have one of the best quilting stores in the lower mainland in uh, the Vancouver area, right next to my house, which is crazy. Um, so this is the new Tilda line. These are just, these are some of the browns and the blues and it's called hibernation and they have um, all of these little hibernating animals. Is that not so cute you guys? Look at him sleeping in there. And then of course there's some beautiful like fall, autumn, winter birds. You got some mushrooms, very William Morris. Uh, inspired I think in my opinion but who doesn't love William Morris right you guys he is the best so um, there's a few different colorways and of course you know me I've bought them all and I'll make bags out of all of these so um, here are there's the red it's like a pink red purple and then of course the blue in there too um, I'll show you the green One's got a little, look, a little squirrel sleeping there. So cute. Um, so there's the greens. I hope I'm holding things long enough for you guys to see. I don't know, it seems way too long for me, but. Oh, you look at the color of the little Mouse sleeping in that one. It's so, so pretty. There's the blues. And then I just got their, um, their fabric mixer too. And so I'll use a bunch of those fabrics with the, um, the decorative fabrics there. So if this line is doing it for you guys and you're absolutely loving that print, um, stay tuned, probably mid-November, November 15th, I'll be releasing some bags. Um, I may make some caddies as well. I don't have very many left. I have, I think, two um, Tula Pink Owl bags and I think three caddies, an elephant, a giraffe, and a polka dot one. Um, not very much that I have left. Anyways, um, so that's it for my cross stitch and I'm gonna show you guys some knitting. So if you just came for the cross stitch today, thank you so much for bearing with me in this. Hopefully it was um, of interest to you. If there is anything you can think of that you'd like to see uh, added next time or more time spent on certain things, just let me know in the comments. Um, I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me today and going over some of this stuff. And if you are interested at all in knitting or spinning, um, just hang tight. I'm going to show you a few things. I went to Knit City Vancouver last month as well. Um, I'll show you some pictures of that and my haul from there. I guess I kind of did my haul for my cross-stitch throat when I was talking about the Kringles and the, um, the Christmas ornaments and the, the Teresa Wensler. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hold tight and um, I'll grab the knitting. I'll be right back. Okay, before I get into knitting, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show um, some of the bags that I've been making in case you guys are interested. I know a lot of you follow me already on Instagram. Um, and I do love anything bright, anything colorful, and anything that's practical and is going to work for me as a stitcher. Um, I've got a couple of these bags left I thought I'd share. These are um, 
Tula Pink. Of course, look at her beautiful owl. They are a vinyl front bag. And what I've done on my bags, it's a bit different than other bag makers, is on the back side, um, I do have a sleeve back here. And there is um, the foam, like the hard interfacing. And so, well, like it does bend, but like it's, it's stiff. And so you can put your pattern back there without it getting all wrinkled, um, but still being able to see what you have in the front. So I have two of those that are available. If you're interested in either, you can go on to Instagram um, and just comment on the photo that way. Then I also have, I got this wonderful iridescent vinyl um, for Halloween and I did some tulip pink bags out of it. And this is a mini notion bag that I have left. Um, and then there is the tulip pink serpent on the back and like, just look at those colors. It's so beautiful. Um, and then I try really hard to um, not have much in the way of wastage and I like to use up all my yarn so I've been making something um, called a mashup bag and that's essentially where I take um, a whole bunch of leftover pieces and in some events I have to buy a little bit more fabric um, to make these bags. So this is again all from um, Tula Pink with the exception of the black um, bat. And then on the back side, we do have uh, the serpent as well. And that is a zippered top. And on the inside of that, um, it's just, it's all the, the black bats. There's a bit of a story that goes behind this. I had um, years ago in Winnipeg, maybe 15, longer than that, 17 years ago, I was shopping at a cross-stitch store and there was a lady that made these caddies. Um, and I bought them. Samantha bought them, we gifted them to our, my mom has one, um, our families have them. And then I wanted to get one for my daughter for Christmas last year, or maybe it was a year previous and I reached out um, and the lady doesn't actually make them anymore. And in fact, it wasn't even the lady, it was the lady's mother that was making them. And she was just, um, I guess, getting a bit too old and she lives in Winnipeg as well and is part of the guild there. Um, and so she just, referred me on to, you know, looking at Pinterest and seeing what they have for caddies and try to make something of my own. So I've done that. Um, and I've gone through a couple different, um, different designs and I find I have one now I think that I like, but this is one of the older designs. I'll show it to you. So this one is the polka dot one. Um, my daughter has the same one here and it secures with Velcro and then when it opens up, it's that long and it can go on your table. But the cool thing is, is that this can also go in your armchair and it has a little vinyl pocket where you can put your, um, you know, your beads, your floss, um, notions, whatever you, whatever you have. And then there is, this is what really was, um, had me falling in love with it. So this is a tray. Um, this one I made with snap so it can be open or closed. But when it's up, it's nice for beading because you can just dump your beads in there and then you don't have to worry about them, you know, popping all over the table. Um, it's a nice contained space and then there is a, a needle pillow as well. And then on the other side, um, there are three pockets that fit like your scissors and your needle packages and stuff like that. So um, anyways, I'm selling those as well. I've sold quite a few and I only have, I think, three left. So I have the polka dots and I also, again, here's another little mashup with the, the same fabric. So if anybody buys this, I think I'll just include this for them um, as a little extra Thank you, I suppose. And then I got into the bright stuff, right, with the um, Tula Pink. And so this is the giraffe one, which is just so, so much fun. So I've got a little note in there. It's, the fabric's called Neck for Days, apparently. Um, yeah, so if anyone's interested, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, and you can send me a message there anytime. Or it is, I do have a Gmail account too. It's fibers and floss at Gmail. Um, so that is my sewing and then onto my knitting. So for my knitting, um, 
I wanted to share that I went to Knit City. Um, maybe what I'll do is insert a little bit of a slideshow for you guys and I'll just talk about it here for a second. So every year I go to Knit City with my girlfriend, Christy. Um, unfortunately, I had to miss last year's because it was my husband's 50th birthday party. Um, but I was very excited to be back again. We have a train going by our house. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm gonna keep talking. Um, so I went to Knit City and they had some really, really wonderful vendors there. It was bigger this year than it had been any previous year. It's a three day event on the Friday night. They have um, classes that you can go to and guest speakers and workshops. Saturday uh, morning, um, the marketplace opens and they have that on Saturday and Sunday and then Saturday evening as well as more workshops. Um, uh, there were some amazing, amazing vendors. I'll show you a picture here of um, gingerbread. Hmm, I can't remember the name exactly, and unfortunately it's not on the yarn I bought. Gingerbread something. I'll put it up here on the screen for you guys. Um, and so they had some black light yarn, and it was so amazing. Um, and so I've got lots of pictures of that. <laughs> and then I bought some of the black light yarn and actually what was really cool is um, I bought it from two dyers in training. I bought it from Jude and Abigail. These are the grandchildren, two of the grandchildren of um, the gingerbread yarn company. I'm sorry, I really should make better notes. I thought I'd kind of wing the knitting part in it. So far it's not going well, is it? Um, the grandchildren dyed it with their grandma over, or their nana over the summertime. And so I thought it was really cool. I got a picture of them. They were so proud to share what they had made. Uh, so I'll be making a toque of sorts for probably my boys out of that. Um, and then another really cool vendor I went to was called Gage Dye Works and I got some beautiful rainbow yarn. Um, and this stuff, it knits up. Um, with rainbow lines. So I think, I'm not sure I'm going to do, I might do a pattern on Ravelry. Um, I'll insert a picture of it here. And um, mm, I can't remember what they call it, but it's like a stained glass look. So the picture is there, the name of the pattern is there as well. And I think I will go ahead and knit that with this. That way you can just really see that variegation with the rainbow colors. Um, there was a picture as well from Gage Dye Works where they showed it and knitted up. Uh, they carry it in various weights. This is a finger, fingerling weight that I bought. Um, and they show it knitted up in like a pair of really long stockings, which is quite fun. Then I went over to um, Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks, and she, of course, is beautiful. I saw her at Fibers West um, because I spin yarn now, too. I don't know. Maybe the knitting's not enough. I thought I would spin it. And it's because of stuff like this, you guys. Look. Can you see that? Look at that sparkle and those colors. And when you're spinning yarn, um, little threads of this is coming off at a time. And you get to see like all of a sudden you'll be spinning just blue and then just green and then yellow and it will all mix together. Um, and it's just beautiful. So that's Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks. She's absolutely lovely too. Anytime I've gone to her, um, her stands, she will just chat you up for a long time. She's very, very approachable, friendly, and clearly quite artistic. I have that one as well. Um, I'll go back now and I'll just show you the... This is the black light reactive yarn that I bought from Jude and Abigail. And then I bought these to kind of go with it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. There is a Bones... Um, toque or knit cap, maybe you call it in the States, that I may knit up with that. I know Tannis from Tannis Fiber Arts knit it for um, one of her boys and it's really cute. And I agree with her. She shared it and she said, you know, she's not really 
um, a Halloween. She's not overly into the whole skeletons and stuff, but this one knit cap, this design is just beautiful. And I think I might knit it as well. So we'll see. Um, the orange I got as well was from the gingerbread, but um, the other matching colors, these ones are not black light, black light reactive. Um, this one here I got from Rose Hill Yarns, the yellow, and then the green, oh, it's also Rose Hill. Um, there's fibers and stuff all over this stuff. This is the problem with fiber arts, right? It gets everywhere. Um, so I bought that at Knit City and that was all I had bought there. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of haul, which has also worked into what I'm making as well. Um, I went to Valley Yarns, which is in Surrey, um, British Columbia, and they're fantastic. And I picked up these two um, chunky skeins. So I might do some knit mittens or something like that for the kids for Christmas, I'm not sure. I always try and make a gift for them at Christmas time. And then another yarn store I frequent as well. Um, it's called Trendy or Whatnot. It's over in Mission, BC. And they carry um, some different yarns that uh, Valley Yarn does not carry. And so, you guys, how can you not buy that? It's so beautiful. So, Juanita from Stitchy Things, you can correct me because I know you shared this yarn this week as well, um, the brand, and it is Dutch and I'm going to get it wrong, but it's like Chappelle, I think. Um, that could be, well, there's my price too, um, Chappelle. It's lovely. Anyway, so I bought that with the intention of making um, maybe like a little Christmas hat for one of my kids. And so I picked up some basic white from there as well. This is opal. Again, this is not, this is from overseas also. It's this brand. I don't know if you guys have used that before. So both of these are fingerling. And I started making, I wanna make a really long like elf hat. And so I started that for whoop, one of my children. And it's just, um, it's knitting up so fun. Just love it. The pattern for this is on Ravelry too, you guys. Um, it's called Elf Baby Hat, all one word, Elf Baby Hat. And it's by Robin Weldon. I'll put her name below here. So you guys can always go grab that pattern. I think it's a free pattern. Or if not, it's like $5, it's nothing crazy. Um, but she has three different brims that you can knit, different um, lace styles, and they're all kind of elf looking. So very fun. Um, I just love anything with bright colors for yarns and it just keeps me going and I can knit things up quite quickly. I think I've, maybe I'm on day four of knitting this hat so far. And uh, when I'm knitting, I'm not putting in a ton of time, maybe a couple hours at a time. Um, so that's really coming along. It's nice. The other thing that I've been knitting is a pair of socks. I did try to make some notes, but you guys, I'm losing my patterns now. Here you go. So, um, back in February, I knit these socks for me and they're a bit big, as you can tell. I still wear them. They're super comfy. Um, the yarn is Biscotti uh, Sock Yarn. And hmm, I don't think I wrote down the name, but I had some left over. And their sock yarn, yarn is great because they actually separate their skein into two skeins so that you could knit two socks at once. Not that I do that, I'd like to do it. Maybe my next pair I'll try that haven't tried it yet but I had some left over and so I wanted to knit my daughter a matching pair um and the purples are different colors I don't know if you can tell there so that's um a Julie Aslan yarn I had bought for on the Spice Market shawl a few years ago at one of the knit cities actually and so just still trying to use up some of those remnants and I have these great little sock blockers they're from Melly knits I'll, I'll link her below she's also local to the lower mainland here and her husband actually prints these up on a 3d printer they were awesome and i bought them at fibers west this year perfect size for the kids socks because you know sometimes the kids socks are just a 
it's hard when they're not little little but they are you know in a size five shoe and my daughter is 16 she'll be 17 in March and she's still in a size four shoe she's got the tiniest feet and so here's some tiny sock blockers they're perfect. The pattern for this too is, um, I can't remember the title of it, but it's by Knitting Expat Designs. It's just a basic sock pattern. She gives actually great instructions for toe up or um, I always just knit toe up, but what would you call this? Like top down? Um, and then also variations for different heels. So I did the German heels on these ones. Um, looking for a different heel, um, opinions of what people think are the best ones and I'll definitely uh, give that a go as well. I don't know I'm kind of I've knit for about 20 years but sock knitting um, is newer to me. It's a two. Having to make two is a problem you guys you know the problem right and so I think I really need to do the knit two socks at once. I'm probably much more successful with that. Um, the next thing I have to show you I'm knitting and I've knit this now for I think three years but it's been not being worked on for about a year and a half of that. My problem is, is I get really excited for fall to knit all the things and then I realize, oh, it's almost Christmas. So then I put my crafting away and I focus on knitting, you know, all the kids little sweaters and stuff like that and knit caps and, you know, Christmas gifts. And then by the time I knit like crazy for two months, um, that's it. I'm done. There's no more knitting happening in January. I put everything away and then I pull out all my cross stitch and my other crafts. And so um, this sweater, unfortunately, I think was tucked away for about two years. So I'm making one called the Girlfriend's Cardigan. I don't know how to pronounce this lady's name. Um, Inkstruck? Inkstruck, maybe? And it's just gorgeous. I have... I have a very loved pattern. I'll show you the picture maybe just so you can see it. Um, it has a drop sleeve to it. So this is the front. It's very long. But if you can see in those pictures there, it has an I-cord edging. And then the back, it just drops off like the nape of the neck. It's beautiful. So beautiful patterns, of course, call for beautiful yarn. Um, again at Knit City, I went and this was my project, um, not last year, but the year previous, um, where I actually was going and shopping for a yarn. You know, I always go and I buy the yarn and then I think, what am I going to make with this? So I have a great yarn collection downstairs of things to make, but not enough to make a sweater. Um, so I'm using a mix of fibers here. I've wrote them down. I have um, extra fine merino wool um in twilight and that is from sunday fiber company and i don't have much left in my bag i have more skeins um in my room but it's a very very pale pink and then the other fiber that i'm using is a baby alpaca mulberry silk mohair and that is from myrtle yarns and both are our local um, yarn companies here as well um and you know, I start knitting this and then I realized even though I spent all this money on that yarn, I needed more. And so I had to go home and she had to custom dye some. I think that was Myrtle yarn and she sent some more out and it was, she was just lovely. Anyways, I'm not sure that I can really show this well in the screen. But this is the cardigan so far. And I really look at the back, look at the neck on this. It's so beautiful. And so this is the first time I've done like the I cord down the sleeve. It's quite um, a very soft, like buttery feel to it. I don't know if you can see the texture. It's so cozy. My lap is so incredibly warm. Um, when I knit this, it's crazy. And of course I'm using my, I don't know how to pronounce it ever, Chiogu needles, um, the interchangeable ones. You know, I made that mistake, like everybody, you buy tons and tons of different types of needles, um, only to end up using one at the end. Um, so I don't know, maybe I should give away my other needles. I have never gone back to them in about six years. So maybe one day I'll just give those away. I'm not sure. Um, 
Yeah, and then I want to show you a couple things. So that's it for my knitting. And for knitting, I'll be making some Christmas gifts and stuff like that, so I can't share too many plans. But maybe next video I'll share what I've made. Um, I have got into some spinning in the last couple of years as well. I don't currently own a um, spinning wheel. I've rented one from the Mission Weavers and Spinners Guild in the past. Um, we'll likely rent one. I'd love to purchase one too, but I just never seem to have $1,500 kicking around to like, you know, make a fun purchase, right? Um, one of our family friends has loaned us her, her Ashford wheel right now. And so we're spinning off that. When we say we, my daughter and I both spin. Um, so these are just some examples of some of the yarn that we have been spinning here. You can see we love the bright colors. I usually will end up taking hand spun and I'll pair it with um, a commercial yarn. Just so the hand spun, you can see the texture and it pops a bit more. Um, I like to pair a lot with a yarn from Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, she's in Montreal and it's all organic yarns that she sells. And it's actually a really cool company to support. It's a small home-based company, um, her and her husband. So she does he knits too but she does like the knitting the marketing the commercial side of it and he dyes the yarn and they have three kids um i just think they have a um it's not a floss tube i guess they do a vlog maybe every week i'll link them below too um they're pretty fun to watch and uh, their colors are so vibrant and so amazing um and i just know that it's going to a wonderful family so we'll love to support them as much as possible but look at that right I just love anything rainbow. So much fun. Um, yeah. Our, we got into spinning because my daughter, two years ago maybe, she was taking textiles at school and I told her, oh, sign up and take the textiles. It's awesome, I did it. You know, we, you'll get a sewing machine and you'll get to sew a pattern. It's gonna be really great. And so she came home, I said, how was it? And she says, terrible she says we're not sewing anything on a sewing machine this year this is the first thing they said in the class and i thought what what are you doing in textiles and she actually ended up with the most amazing teacher um and they did you know they started with some cross stitch and some embroidery and stuff like that um and then they got into dyeing they got into fiber arts they learned how to um spin yarn where they made their own little um drop spindles and she brought it home and I thought, oh, it's kind of up my alley. So, you know, I'm watching her and I thought, well, maybe I can try that. Will you let me try it? She says, yeah. So I checked it out and then I loved it. And I thought, oh, there's, maybe I can get a drop spindle, you know? So then um, we went to a store, Brooklyn Brothers. It's not there anymore in Abbotsford. And um, I bought one and we bought a bunch of fiber from Lynn Haven Farms. And uh, since then we've gotten to know Joanne at Lynn Haven quite well. She uh, lives maybe a four minute drive from us and she raises her own sheep, um, shears them on property and she processes all their fiber on property and the staple length is like 11 inches. It's just crazy, you guys. And she has BFL, um, Coradale and uh, it's just unbelievable. And she's got some alpacas on site um, and she dyes everything and it's it, honestly, it's grossly underpriced. Um, and she is the most kind and caring and giving woman. Um, you know, she invites you right into your home. She lets you um, do some carding there, play with some color. She just has that passion for the fiber arts and uh, really wants to share that with everybody. And so Ava and I became quite well acquainted with her and I thought there's got to be a a more productive a faster way to spin so then we looked into a wheel i joined a guild um so we could rent this wheel for a ridiculously inexpensive cost um and then there we spent a solid year and a bit spinning and um eva may join us maybe she's at school right now but she may want to pop in and say hello i know she did um in august with the Huga stitcher and she thought it was really fun so she may pop in and do a little segment and she is knitting a sweater 
out of yarn that she has spun by hand um, and she has spun all the yarn and now she's just knitting so it's beautiful it's very very nice and hopefully she'll share that with us today anyways um, I think that's about it for me um, I feel like I'm sure I'm gonna turn this off and think oh I should have said this but that's about it I think so if you want to enter the giveaway um, the code word is seasonal so like subscribe and use seasonal please um, and hopefully I'll see you maybe in about three weeks thanks so much you guys thank you for taking the time to um, to sit here and listen and just share you know the the stitchy experience with me I think our stitching community is um, so needed you know, we, the, uh, makers are makers, right? And um, maybe I'll share a bit about that next time. But um, we get a lot from making things with our hands. Um, there's actually some terminology that goes along with it. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but the essence of it is if you can make something with your hands, it actually brings you a lot of happiness in your life, especially if that thing you're making is something that is um, has some sort of sense of purpose, right? So um, whether that's art that you're looking at and enjoying on the wall or whether that's, you know, your sweater or your mittens you're wearing. Um, and then also a sense of community, right? Uh, just getting involved with other people locally, um, near and far and online, um, sharing our knowledge, um, you know, sharing what we have, sharing our patterns after, um, gifting what we can, um, just really enjoying that time together. So I hope that you've enjoyed this time. I thank you for watching. I think this is a crazy long, I was hoping for maybe 30 minutes, but I might be upwards of an hour somehow. I don't know how that happened, but anyways, um, thank you. I will maybe see you in three weeks. Take care.